Hi everyone, I've been away for a while, and it, so all summer uh, my tomato plants were outside, and now it's October and it's time to bring them inside. I have brought them inside a couple of weeks ago, what the best plants were. Now, the difference between the ones that were growing outside and the ones that were growing inside is uh, the plant elongation, so the plants are uh, taller uh, than the ones that were Side, so that tells me that they're searching for light on the flight. Um, also, the fruits, there's not uh, enough fruits per plant inside. Just a, just a few flowers here and there, and they are fruiting, but not like not enough to feed a family. So I came up with this idea. Why not add a bunch of lights? So I did. Um, 250 watts per side. Uh, so I have 500 watts for uh, of lighting, and this is like 500 watts of LED lighting, um, which is about 1,100 watts of draw on the power, uh, because the power supply is only uh, 80 some percent efficient. So I, I did reserve a few watts for the fans. So uh, I have about 900 watts of LEDs and I reserved uh, 100 watts for the fans because my power supply is uh, one kilowatt. And so uh, I have uh, different colors. I have some red infrared in there, uh, white, the neutral white. I have uh, cold white, ultraviolet, blue, and also the big ones are the uh, full spectrum for grow. So, Basically, things plants should be happy in here, and uh, they are. I've uh, completed the other lamp on the other side a couple of weeks ago, and I'll show you the results. All right, so these are tomato plants, uh, by the way, guys. So there's nothing illegal about this. Um, so I've brought my tomato plants two and a half weeks ago from the outside, and I had a landing spot which this has this nice light set up here. This again is a 500 watt lamp, 200 watts per side. I'll show you. I'll just pan around. And if I put my hand anywhere, you will see that the shade is minimum. So penetration is not a problem. Each leaf has exposure even deep inside and so the plants are so happy they're growing at a phenomenal rate but still compact with a good stem size and this is actually a um, uh, an heirloom um, I believe it's a brandy red tomato plant so it's going to make fabulous, um, fabulous uh, fruit if, of course, if it's if it keeps its flowers. Now, keep in mind that I had to trim all my plants to bring them in because, of course, they were too tall. Uh, this uh, plant here uh, needs support because it already had fruit. I, I was able not to trim that one. Just show. Just zoom into that one there. And so you can see that throughout the canopy, all the, all the leaves are, are lit. And since I have so many light vectors, this is actually a light plane. And I'm not even using top lighting because I believe that top lighting will only benefit the top leaves of the canopy and then they will get full. Whereas these, they get exposed from multitude of direction. Now, of course, we'll see about the yield a little later. One thing about this setup, however, is right now I have way too many plants in here. I have something like um, 12 plants, and I should only have these six in the middle, which are in double buckets. 
and um, the reason why they're in double buckets is for uh, passive uh, hydroponics or, or crack key method uh, non-circulating hydroponics so the irrigation uh, keep the level on each bucket at about uh, one inch and a half and fill with nutrients from uh, hydroponic solution uh, so th these are all details I'll get into later. I'm very happy with these lights. These these lights are probably a game changer for inside grow. They're very small and the only thing that I don't like about it is the uh, surface wiring. Well, I don't have any depth to these panels so I have to use surface wiring. Maybe there will I will find a way later on to hide some of the wires because it's a little bit ugly but I don't care right now is for testing and the testing shows good results good flowering plants are definitely happy with uh, with this light they're not searching for for light of course because they have like plenty there available all right well you're gonna say well what about a power supply what, what kind of power supply are we using to uh, power this uh, monster light well I had the choice of using cheap power supplies or this Lambda power supply which uh, can uh, produce one kilowatt of power. So the cheap power supplies have a power factor uh, of about 60-63%. This Lambda power supply, this expensive power supply, it can supply uh, the power that I need with a power factor of one, perfect power factor. Now, if you have just a couple of lamps, it's not, it's not a problem, you use a cheap power supply. But if you want a big installation, then you need something good. These power supplies, they sell for like six or seven hundred dollars, so they're very expensive. It makes the lamp very expensive, but much worse. All right, so um, the lamp has a, um, an aluminum sheeting of 90 mils. I find that it's not quite enough because where there's ventilation, there's a fan and a heat sink, the uh, area, uh, the immediate area becomes cooler but doesn't really cool the rest of the, the area where the fan is. So uh, we'll just uh, pan around here. So where there's a fan, it's, uh, it's really cool right around here but um, over here for example or over here it's not that cool so um, the fan itself uh, works great uh, but it should be working a little bit better if I have let's say a uh, 1 8 um, 125 mil uh, aluminum sheeting instead